in this type of fight. It's a cocoon if an Illidan dives in on a support, makes him pull back a little bit, but the Ley Line Seals in particular were great too. So hopefully going into Team Spider Queen, they can get those tools to handle the Illidan because he is someone that is a bit of a nuisance and you need to make sure that you have control over him or he's going to run wild. Yeah, and this is the big thing about Illidan. And they tried to they tried to do it with Muradin in the last uh, game, and that didn't really work out quite that well. It was close at a lot of moments, though. But now it's all about Tomb of the Spider Queen. It's all about our fourth map, which could obviously also be the last map of the series. And when it comes to the bans, I'm more so interested to see what Dignitas bans out, because this is another map where Expert has shown a big love for Medivh, and that is what ADRD is also known for. So does Dignitas respect that, or are they okay with the potential pick? Stitches continues to be banned out. That'll be the third time in this series that we won't be seeing Stitches from JPL. Team Dignitas will be electing to move into possibly the Tassadar ban, uh, which, which we did see uh, earlier on in the series. Ooh, there they're thinking go. about the Medivh too, Kaldor. I like it. Boom. So we have two picks that target specific heroes that the uh, opponent's team is strong with. Now we could see again Uther taken. With Medivh banned out and Stitches banned out, there's a lot of the traditional meta picks open. We still have a Nuburak, we have Uther, we have Genji. They are all up for grabs here. And we have talked a lot about Malthiel. Hasn't really come into play as much today as I was expecting. But this is another map where he can shine. I would expect him not necessarily on the first pick though. Maybe one of the teams says he has a high enough priority, but I would doubt it with the bands that we saw. And Expert, they go into the Uther again, keeps them flexible. And this but. is the first time that Genji has been left open for our teams. Will Dignitas move into it? Typically in the past, they've gone Genji Stitches, but this time with those Stitches being available, Genji and Nubarak ain't a half bad bet if you're looking to get a victory. Yeah, Genji and Nubarak is also a very traditional one to open things up with here. Nubarak in general, now that Stitches is banned out, would also be great, of course, for JPL. Cocoon the Uther, move in for the engage, get the fight there, keep the army away. I mean, you can still open with the Oriel. You have the Uther on the other side, so if you want to go into any kind of double support, Tassadar is open, so is Oriel. So you have a lot of options to just start heading into the double support composition. Now on the first spot, loving it, finally, all right. Tomb of the Spider Queen, we had that map before and we didn't get it. But at this point, Malthiel is prioritized very, very highly here. And I think for the map, it really caters to, uh, towards it. I expected that to happen on a few of the Inferno Shrine games that we had so far. But on Tomb, it's also strong. Experts, they know exactly what they want. Immediately the Anubarak, we said what an important pick it is for Bad Benny. And Uther was higher uh, prioritized. But since they are still able to get a Anubarak on the second, they are saying, yes, indeed, we are going to jump right onto that opportunity with the gray main for Nick. And yeah, for me, it's once again, what is the theory going to play? Are we going to have another Sonya? Oh, maybe. We'll see how that goes. Malthiel still be one of those strong heroes in lane that absolutely dominate no matter what. So no matter what a third row gets, he's going to definitely be asking for help from his teammates. Now, the yeah, Anubrek, another point too, is very important against Malthiel. Any type of heroes that have these channeled uh, AoE effect spells, like Tormented Souls, Kerrigan, Bringing Her Maelstrom, or even Malfurion with Tranquility. If you see any of those, cocoon that sucker right away. Take away the heroic, go for an engage and force him down. So a Anubrek, big pick up here for Expert. The Chromie Ban. This is the fourth time that we see in a Chromie ban on this battleground, people on the second phase just do not allow her to get through. I think they are really just starting to target ADRD a lot. That happened several times against Expert now, and it feels... I don't know, I don't want to draw that parallel too much, but a little bit it feels as if teams are looking at ADRD as the Glorong of Europe, criticizing a bit his hero pool maybe. He has a very distinct hero pool, and normally the variety is definitely there for him, but when you ban the uh, Medivh already out, you're targeting ADRD particularly if you also add the Chromie then to the bans. Yeah, the Medivh in itself just takes the effectiveness of Expert and what they do well and just brings it down a notch. It's not a notch where it's too impenetrable, but it's enough where it's like, it's worth yeah. a ban. Think about what heroes he's known for. He's really known for his Medivh, he's also known for the Chromie on the map. He has played the Abatha when they were going into an Abatha composition, and on this map we've seen him on the Aureal as well. But he has all the Tassadar. So he has five heroes that make out 
the, I'm not saying that his hero pool is limited to five heroes, but it's five heroes that are, I think, his core. Yeah. And teams are currently, I feel, a bit tempted to oftentimes target him when it comes to the bans. And the Probius nerfs fell off a little bit. Can't bring out the Probius as much yeah. anymore. The Nova exactly. worked once on Brax's holdout, but we haven't seen it since then. He has a couple of other heroes that have just fallen a bit off meta. And he has enough other stuff that he can show, but I'm a bit curious to see what they are going to draft for him. But first of all, we have Dignitas. And Dignitas decides that they are playing with Lunara again as the main damage dealer, the carry that is supported by the two supports. Malthiel, of course, is going to see a lot of love later on in the game, once that he hits 16 in particular, after he has Black Harvest as his level 4 talent completed, the quest talent. So, for the experts, what are we going to see from them? I am really interested what ADRD is going to be pulling off here. I think we need engage and decisive heroes that force fights right away. Because this composition, the Lenara and the Malfeo, I feel like we're going to see more and more of this on maps they open up over time. Because they literally leech your health away over time to the point where you just start to lose a team fight. There's a breaking point that you just fall apart. Lenara and Malfeo. Poison is just a bit much. We saw it yesterday, I think, against the good guys. Or was it Zelsi the other day? Regardless, the team was playing this composition, and we saw a team that was winning. They were pushing in for the boss. They took a couple hits from Monara. They kept staying around there. And then it became a point where it's pure chaos and pure panic where they completely fall out. So we have the Tassadai again for him. ADRD. We talked. What, what, uh, the good guys draft yesterday? I think it was uh, actually Team Liquid versus. Uh, okay. Okay, d d doesn't really matter too much, but I agree with you that against Malfield you need to be decisive in the way that you approach a fight after he hits the late game phase. Yeah. But Tassadai is once again being used for Team Expert here, and now they are more and more focusing their efforts on keeping Greyming alive. So ADRD is just falling back on one of the heroes that I just mentioned after so many of his others are either not really in the meta or banned out, and they go for the poke with Liming here. I do have an answer for you. It was playing Ducks versus the good guys. It was that matchup the playing Ducks played this okay. composition where they just completely burned them down. But yes, they have to be affected by their fights and get their kills right away because the late game for Lenara and Malthew are just completely devastating. Now, obviously, we're looking for a tank here for Dignitas for the engages to come in and force some fights. It's going to be the Diablo picked up for Dig. Look at that, JPL on the Diablo now. So looking for those stuns. There's a lot of potential stun combos here with Diablo, maybe a Detainment Strike follow-up that we could see there. And good targets, too. Uh, yeah. Even on Nubrak here is vulnerable enough that they can get a kill on yeah. him if they're able to go in for the fight. I would be surprised if they get these kills easily against Bad Benny. He's usually too good with his positioning totally, yeah, to I'm fall just... into the trap, but uh, you are right. They could definitely make that work if they get the damage in at this point. But the longer the fight lasts, the better for them. And Diablo on this map shines through Devil's Do on level 1. If he has those 100 souls, the sustain that he has, the viability is insane. And if the double support doesn't even have to worry about the front line and can just simply target Lunara all day long and baby her, or make sure that they are keeping Malthiel alive when he goes in deep, then you know that you have a problem if you're on the side of Team Expert. So... The experts need to really be careful how they approach this. Maybe a good kill early on uh, with a uh, stun into stun, curse bullet, Liming combo, that would probably work for them if they can, especially if they can jump the back line. Yeah, you have one team on the side here. It's all about long, drawn out fights, burning people down, leeching away their health bars. On the other side, it's all about getting those resets and just completely bulldozing through a team fight. Who pulls it off? That's really the question here. Their early game might be a bit difficult for Team Expert. It's going to really rely on that a new wreck engage into an Uther stun for that setup for the Lee Ming combo. But if Team Digging Toss on the left side here with that Lenara bringing out the hope for Ariel can burst out those heals, it could be a rough road here for Expert. One of the things that's also going to be slightly awkward for them in the early game is going to be uh, the uh, Tassada that will have to hold the bot lane. Because if you look at it right now, the bot lane for Dignitas is pretty crisp. They're probably going to have the Malthiel down there. He's going to run the solo. And then on the side of the opponent, it has to be the Tassada and then rotations that are going to be happening there every now and then. Nobody can really uh, hold a candle to what Malthiel is able to provide on the solo lane. So the team that has to shake it up a bit when it comes to the laning phase is definitely the experts. And that could definitely backfire if we are seeing Dignitas run away with an early game lead. Yeah, they have the tools to come in for the rotation though. Like a new rack 
immediately from the other line here is very similar to Meridian, where he can jump over that wall, but he burrows underneath it and goes for the pickup. Um, but yes, I agree with you. I think the tone needs to be set by Expert early. I just feel like, if not, if we go into the mid phase and both teams are very even, we're going to see a clear and distinct moment where Ding Ta starts to pull away from the entire fight. And it's going to be hard for Li Ming to start getting those resets. Yeah, definitely. This is a lot where Greymane also has to deliver for sure when it comes to the damage. And he is also one of the main wave clearers here for the team. So I'm definitely ready for the game now. So we have a 2-1 lead for Team Dignitas. And the question that remains is, are experts ready once again to deliver a second map and, and force the fifth? Or are we going to see Dignitas walk away with a 3-1 victory? Well, you're ready. I'm ready. Are you at home ready? We know our teams are currently ready. It's game four. Dignitas with a 2-1 over Expert. Can they cinch the best of five series? Or will we see Expert tie it up? Team Dignitas is starting to the left on our fourth map. And we have Snitch on Lunara, Zelia on Malfiel, Bakery on Rega, JPL on Diablo, and Amina on Oriel. On the right side, in the red, Team Expert, Tassadar, will be played by ADRD, Kursen on the Uther, Bad Benny on a Nubrak, Nick playing Li Ming, and a Thorough with Greymane. At the same time now, when we're looking at the talents, once again, the Cocktail build, pretty much the standard on the side of Greymane, and on level one for Malfiel, also just the extended range for the train. Li Ming getting that power hungry there, looking to uh, really grab those region glows and continue to shell away with that extra damage there. JPL comes in, puts a new back against the wall, the Taming Strike hits him, Bad Benny will burrow out, but Dignitas coming out with a statement already. <laughs> yeah, Expert is trying to put the pressure onto the, uh, down to the wall, but it's Dignitas who reacts immediately. So for now, JPL of course is going to be very interested in taking a few minions down for his soul count, but we're also having Lunara and uh, I'm curious to see how much damage she can get in. But at the bot lane, it's not Tassadar. He's part of the rotation. They're having Greymane instead. And I think he's going to have a really rough time here. He's already at half HP at that bot lane against Malfiel. Especially with no sustain, Malfiel's going to destroy that lane. Yeah, he definitely should. Zelia is currently freezing the lane. He's not attacking it here, so he forces a Thero even farther out. And what you, just, uh, what you have just seen is really good if you're playing a lot of solo laners. So if you are trying at some point uh, that yourself, you're trying to make sure that the uh, minions of your opponent don't get into your own tower range. So you're willing to take a few shots from the minions onto yourself, and you freeze the lane just outside of the tower range, which, as you can see right here on the screen at this point, forces the next wave very close to your own tower. So Ethero, if he really wants to get the experience, has now all of a sudden to walk all the way towards the tower range which makes it much easier for the rest of Team Dignitas to come in from the middle of the map and jump him and take him down. So every single time that an opponent can force you this deep into the lane, you are very much exposed. And that's when minimap awareness is once again absolutely crucial. If you all of a sudden start missing one, two heroes on the map and you are far out on the lane, you should retreat. Yeah, susceptible to ganks at that point. Also, a really good type of strategy to pull off if you're facing off against questing stacks. I know we haven't seen Ragnaros in a while, but if he has that Q build setting up and you're able to put all the men to your side of the battleground, you completely deny him from finishing his Q talents. Butcher, another one. I know I'm naming talents or heroes that you're not going to see in competitive play, but you at home might see it in quick match in Hero League. These stacks that you can deny can be very effective. So learn how to control that wave. Just walk forward, have your S key ready to go, and just kind of... Kind of just uh, yeah. teeter on it, you know? Freezing lanes is just one of the best tools that you have as a solo laner. And once that you practice that a little bit, you can use... One of the things that people do not use enough to uh, just go for combos and try to uh, set... Just to work with cooldowns is the training mode that we have. The test mode is absolutely fantastic. So if, ha if you haven't used it yet, make sure that you use it a bit. Just to toy around with new heroes in particular. If you pick up a new hero, just make sure you go into the test mode. Practice a few of these things. It's definitely going to help you a lot with your own play. I would say if you spend, gosh, it's going to sound like a lot of time, two to three hours just working on your auto attacks in particular, stutter stepping. It's something yeah. that can just really take your play and elevate it quickly. That's one way to ramp your play overall. If you're able to consistently move, reposition yourself and get to a spot where you get the advantage on your opponent, you can transition from multiple heroes. You don't have to be a one-trick pony. For example, another thing that is really great to work on as well is animation cancel. A great hero where you can showcase that quite easily is, for example, Leoric. So if you move in with Leoric 
and he has a really long auto, um, animation on his auto attacks. And if you go in, you hit an auto attack, and right after the auto attack connects, you go in for a queue. So you hit your skeleton swing, and after that, you can hit another one. So basically, you cancel one of the animations, and it allows you to get an extra auto attack in. This is a really small thing to do, but if that becomes an, um, an automated process for you, that you do it all the time, then it really starts to add up. And it can give you that small edge on when pushing out a lane or trying to push out damage in a team fight that can decide over victory or loss. So just practice these things a little bit. And Zelia just showed that off at the bottling here. Pushing in for those minimal things that really stack up for you in a game. Because you'll see in the experience, you'll see in the team fight, you'll see in help bars as well, they're able to pull those little things out. Now, now we've gone on our tangent, helped you become a better player, hopefully. Let's go ahead and go back into game number four. It's Tomb of the Spider Queen. We're going back into the bottom lane. Azalea hopes to take on a thorough with a mouthfeel. So the game is continuing. Zelia has now the position that we talked about. Look how Ethero is really eager to not go into deep just yet. So he's actually standing behind a little bit, and already JPL was here at the top and threatening. That's why Ethero moved down to the bottom of the wave, just to make sure that if someone rotates in, he's a bit farther away from that potential gang. Right now, though, as the game continues, we're still very early in. 1 minute 30. Both of the teams without a kill yet on level 2, but already is starting to look at turn-ins, especially when we're looking at Expert, who has 8 gems delivered. Yeah, Ding Toss at the moment is kind of struggling to help clear out these waves. Rhaegar in particular is their best wave clear they have, so they're going to have to make sure they match wherever we see Nick's crew move up the top, as Team Expert is doing their best to make sure to push their opponent in, which makes it a bit harder for that Diablo to come in for ganks if they know where he's at at all times, due to the vision the minion waves are giving them. Malfiel is now also working straight into the middle here. And of course, on level 4, we're going to see him come up with his quest talent. But for now, he's just destroying the lane here with the rest of the team. Greymane is using the opportunity, though, to look at a turn in. I'm not quite sure if he's going to be able to pull that off. No, Ethero still holding his gems here as Zelia starts to rotate back down. But rotations are really just absolute key. And good stun here as JPL puts Kirsten in a bit of an awkward spot for a moment. But Diablo is not fully stacked just yet either, so he needs to be careful. Yeah, this is a part where they don't quite have the damage that you would need to get those kills unless they had all four people just put them on maybe even a tower. Zanara walled decent in the late game. In the early game, her damage doesn't spike too heavily. You're waiting for that level 7 talent to hit. Not because she gets a major burst in terms of actual auto attack damage, but because she spreads that damage out so much that it actually stresses the Uther to the point where you can get a kill. Regardless, Dignitas keep moving with the rotations, though, because they want to keep Expert in a spot where they're not turning in. Yeah, and the teams are even when it comes to experience, but there's a lot of pressure on uh, Team Expert now. And we have currently an attack against Malviel that happened down there, so they rotated Nuburak in and that forced Zelia back. As you can see, there's a lot of rotations happening at this point on the map. JPL gets body blocked, but Mena is there. They feel still not quite out of it, but that Benny pushed into tower range and shots are connecting. He's super low, but able to escape. They can toss to be able to heal up there as they tap in the well. And this bottom lane has been quite the fun one here. A little bit of trade between both of our teams. I think Zelly actually went back and healed on up. And he's hoping to keep the stay moving for him as a thorough is finding an advantage here. Here's the one thing about a Graming in a solo 101. While he wins, he wins hard. When he loses, he loses kind of hard because he has no sustain. But he does have the power of damage. And he's using that right now against Zelia. Especially with the cocktails here, of course. Just waiting until he has the perfect explosion going and then go straight in for it. So lining that up quite nicely here. But we have now also again Diablo trying to be a nuisance. ADRD in a bit of trouble. And Snitch is always poking away here. And this is just going to continue as the game progresses. At the bot lane, we still have that battle between Greymane and Celia. Malthiel is doing quite well here at this point, but Ethero, he's really going in. That's important when you're up against Malthiel. If you commit, you need to commit hard. Yep, you can't float around and lolly doll. This is what I call it there. We tend to sit there and just do nothing and you get poked down by him with them draining out of the life on you. Bad Benny in the middle will get thrown by Diablo once again, but consistently saving that burrow charge to make sure that he's going to get locked down, but also because he can get away from the fight. Seven now here for Snitch, and he'll be able to start working in that Splinter Spear. Yeah, Splinter Spear is going to become a, an important tool for him to get the damage out. Also, of course, for the potential wave clear. But both of them are really looking at the turn in potential because we have enough gems on both sides. But so far, Expert has done a much better job at securing the gems. 41 against 16 turned in. Dignitas eager to be the first one with a Web Weaver wave though. 
We'll see if they can prevent that from occurring as Kirsten's getting six more gems dropped off. He does get interrupted while a thorough in the bottom will take the pressure from Bakery and Zalia. They're hoping to drop off their gems. You're right, they are eager about this. They bring everyone into the center to do so, but Bad Benny answers back with the burrow charge on JPL. Yeah, JPL nearly falling here, and Li Ming was about to drop him, but a lot of the shots soaked. Now, thanks to the Devil's Dew, he just has tapped the fountain, and he's back to full health. AD already escapes, but Nick delivers the final set of gems to the Queen. And now we have the Web Weavers descending for the red team. Going to be descending here. Will Dingtoss have the clear they need? Typically, you want to be able to have that Thorned Binds from Lenar at level 10 to help clear these Web Weavers. But still, Splinter Spear will help out. Bakery in particular going to help out with that clear. And Malfield should be in the bottom. How much can Team Expert get on this push? We'll see as Li Ming pushes the top lane wall three from experts in the middle. We also have a really interesting talent choice taken. We've been talking a lot about the level seven of Malfiel, where Touch of Death helps you against the double support. But we also pointed out that it's more so important against double healers, since Tassadai is more reliant on his shield. What we see now for Malfiel is cold hand, so you can slow the opponent. And that is actually a decent setup for a potential unfair advantage on Lunara's level 13. So we have slow. Lunara is going to capitalize on in it anyways, thanks to the auto attack she's going to be able to get in. There comes the Splinter Spear, by the way. But if she's not afraid of Li Ming and doesn't feel the need to go into the Greater Spell Shield, it would now be a fantastic tool for them to actually head straight into the unfair advantage on level 13. So far, Experts doing pretty well with their pushes as they get both forts low, bottom left and middle. They don't quite get the forts for that level 10, but they're about to hit it. They do hit 10 here, and they finally get the fort at the bottom with one cocktail coming out. Expert has won the race at 10. Can they force a fight as Bad Benny charges in on JPL? They have significantly won it, and here force comes ball. the force ball. JPL is going to die, and that is a big problem. He didn't have the 100 yet, so it's not reset. But still, experts have made a massive leap here. Way much more gained than I thought through that first objective. Yeah, they can get a fort here in the middle, and they're moving towards it. They also are a little bit behind on terms of gym for the second turn in, but they are close, which is great for them. Ding Toss no side does have 75 gym for their own turn in, but they have to hit 10 first, and they finally do hit it here. We'll see if they go in for the fight. It is Thornwood Vines for the Lenar. She's definitely going to intend to poke. Yeah, it's poking here the entire time as much as she possibly can. The question just is, can they deliver right now? That's what they are aiming for. JPL already about to move in. Bakery attempting to deliver. Kirsten interrupts. Here comes the stun again into the wall. Couple of poke shots from Snitch. Uh, we have Apocalypse use. Malthiel goes in as well, but gets cocooned right away. Cocooned right away. To be able to burn down by Snitch here as he steps forward. Zillia's on the left side and they're trying to get this turn in. For the most part, they are spreading that poison from Lenara, and they do get a few gems turned off, but they need four more, and Mane has it on lock. Dropping the four off now, and the Web Weavers will be coming in for Dig. Long fights are good for them here, for sure. Look how low Nick is alone. The entire time, it's all about just healing enough and expert. Team Expert is really in a spot where a long drawn out fight is not great for them since there's just way too much poke with Lunara's poison, with all the attacks, Malthiel of course coming in. So it is going to become a problem, especially in the late game. Especially with Devil's Do. It's all about staying for Team Ding Toss. Now with the three Webbers, how will they push in with these webs? They got in the middle here. Bad Benny continues to be the target here. JPL just keeps charging in. Tame Strike against the wall. Bad Benny low. We'll be able to burrow charge out, but with no main tank in the front, they can break this wall down. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving the way they are punishing Bad Benny every time he steps forward. Just simply using those stuns into the walls and then a detainment strike basically into the same spot. They are going deep and Bad Benny is forced to reposition once again. The wall being used here to stun out Tassada. He's able to dimensional shift away, but that fort is an easy forfeit. Easy pickup for them. Gray man defending the bottom lane. Top lane was defended by the Lee Ming. So it's two forts down for Ding Toss, one down for Expert. So not too shabby for our teams, but Expert in a major lead experience. They're about to hit 13 already. Yeah, they have still that level lead. Now, of course, that's going to be mitigated slightly as we have the experience on the lanes picked up again. But Expert still holds on to the lead that we had already earlier. And now with the level 13 talent, they have also 
quite a few tools available. I would say the 13 is going to hit much harder on Dignitas' side, though. Their power spike there is stronger, especially if they decide to focus on damage over protection and use Snitch with unfair advantage over the Greater Spell Shield. Experts poking away here as the turn in trying to go in for Dignitas. They didn't quite get it. In fact, they were denied by the cocktail that came out from a thorough. The turn in is available for Expert, though, and a new rack is dropping off in the top. 13 talents still hasn't been picked up for Tassadar and Uther. What yeah. are they waiting on? We could see the nullification here on the side of Tassadar if he wants to, so he could definitely use that. So they are just waiting what they need in the team fight here. They definitely have a few options available. But we also have 13 about to hit for Team Dignitas, and that is going to be an important talent for them, since once again, this is going to be absolutely destroying if they play it right with Lunara. There's the nullification already chosen on the side of Tassadar. Dignitas setting up for pressure coming their way in the top. Seems like they're going to forfeit this fort, as they should, just to make sure they keep staying alive. Malfield's in a position to come in for a flank in the middle if uh, JPL is able to get an engage to occur. Decides to go ahead and go to the bottom, start clearing out that lane here. And it's all about defense for Dignitas right now. They want to get that juicy 13. Yeah, they gave up the top the top four. The Web Weaver is going to push that down, but you're right. They are just trying to get the experience through the AoEs up here in the middle and then take their talents. And Lunara going actually not the way that we expected her to, but the fight is starting here as we once again have the poke away. JPL is really low though, needed to move out. And they are engaging again as Diablo jumps forward and it receives the Ancestral. Ancestral comes out, Zillia on the right side too, gonna pop the Tormented Souls and now they're diving forward here. Can he sustain through? Curse and Doe will have a stun pretty soon. We're gonna have the Cocoon popping out and Team Dignitas will be forced to move out and the disengage as Zillia's Tormented Souls has negated. Yeah, Zarya negated here, and I'm really surprised by the pick of Lunara. Giant Killer is a great talent, but against an Anubarak and a Greymane, I did not really expect it. After we saw the level 7 pick up on the side of Malthiel, I really expected them to go into the unfair advantage and hope to get the slows in. Um, especially maybe even moving with Rhaegar into the totem here. But they decided to go instead for Giant Killer. Interesting choice. Well, Nubrak also did get the Region Globes at level 1, so he will get more health later. So maybe the thought is there we want to be able to kill off that Benny when he finishes that quest. But still, it is an interesting choice from Snitch. I think it would have also enjoyed the ability with unfair advantage. You just get so much value out of it. I'm just wondering now about the level 7 choice of Malthiel, to be honest. Because when I saw that, it was, to me, it basically signaled, hey, we want to have some synergy later on but they don't have that now. So Melfi L7 is slowing, but so does Lunara anyways. So the big question here is really, wouldn't it have been better to just go for the edits slow on the heels, making sure that with the touch of death, you have an option of shutting down some of Uther's heels, even though it's not as dominant as with the normal double support comps. At the moment, Experts going straight for a boss dig just now, maybe catching wind of this. Gonna go ahead and go for a turn and dropping off on the top while Bakery will keep an eye on the fog there, the expert can come in from. The drop does fall in. JPL oh. gets engaged upon though as Bad Benny comes out. First bullet right away. And again, the Ancestral coming through. Big cooldown burned already, but I'm really loving the way Expert is controlling this right now. They want to go for JPL once again. Cocoon is ready. They could use it. I was actually expecting them to even force the fight with the Cocoon here. There's a side not to. They have the level 16 talent. They are going to defeat the Web Weavers first. But Dignitas is still far behind in this. And if you think about it, we only had a single kill in the game. One kill. Expert was able to take Hero down early on, but they have still a two-level lead. Thanks to the way they have been controlling the battleground, to the objectives they won, the boss they've taken, mostly structures, but that is quite impressive. Expert is running away with this, and Dignitas, they really need that next level. Two-level lead, just hit a three-level lead. Dignitas will get their 15 at the moment. Still one away from 16. JPL pushing up here on the top with the aid of the Web Weavers. Gotta be a bit careful as Oriol and Malfeo aren't here for the moment. Experts looking for a fight. The cocoon is still up, and here it is. The bro charge on JPL. The force wall comes out. The curse bullet does connect. There is so much pressure on JPL the entire time, and this time we see Expert forcing the fight. They go in with the cocoon. Force wall is in. The stuns are there. Cleanse used, though, and JPL walks away. At least for now, Zelia in the middle of things. Popping his all tries to go in. Here comes the APOC. They're chasing down Team Expert. Snitch slowing them, trying to use his damage. But again, we see Dignitas retreat as the experts. 
move out of harm's way. But Ding Toss hoping to open up this window where they can go for a turn in. They're getting a few of the gems dropped off. JPL charges forward, hits ADRD. Dimensional shift will be used. 16 still not here. Ding Toss still looking for a fight though as Snitch charges forward. The constant Greyman curse bullet shots against Diablo really put him into a rough spot here. JPL is under so much pressure being the single or the main tank of the team. Ancestral had to be used on Lunara as she was getting low. 16 still not ready for Dignitas. But once it is, I am really curious to see what impact Malthiel has because he has completed his level four. His quest talent is done. Once he starts moving in with his 16 talent and his ult, this should be a problem for Team Expert in the team fights. Here it is, 16's up. Team Expert's trying to turn in the last few gems here to get that Web Weaver push going in, and ADRD is able to drop off before Snitch comes in for their harass. It's all about defense here for Dignitas, but they will be able to go for a turn in if they can make sure not to lose any keeps here and also defending against Expert's push. Yeah, Memento Mori has been taken by Malphiel now, but you are, of course, right. The Web Weavers, that is going to be a crucial point, but Dignitas will try and fight here. The 16 talent is also a massive power spike again for Diablo himself with the reset on the shadow charge. Time to see how this all breaks out. Bad Benny is scouted on the top right by Zillia. Turns around for the auto attacks. Diablo charges four, but gets hit with the impale. Curse bullet hitting JPL. And while the heals keep coming out, you're right, the pressure continues to hit him, and he has to be in that front line for his team, but Nick with that mirror ball being online can start chunking it too. Yeah, and at this point, Ethero really needs to, uh, sh needs a sharpshooter award because that guy, on an achievement perspective, has hit one bullet after another. Diablo low and about to fall, he goes down. Souls lost and no engage yet. Mena isolated and he dies too. The answer still is too late. Perfect play by Expert. A triple kill. Diablo, of course, back by now, but the first keep has already fallen. First keep has fallen. There's still Malfiel here for the fight. Apoc comes out. They go in. Divine Shield at the same time. Zelia's That's going it. in here with the Tormented Souls. Can he do anything? No, he gets eliminated. And you're right. This is looking like it's game. As Team Expert wants to tie up the series, they go straight for core. Expert that goes in Dignitas. It's only Rega that is still alive, and this is game number five. Team Expert, perfect execution on the last attack. They make it happen. They take the map of Dignitas, force the fifth game, victorious on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Consistently putting pressure on JPL, but the main story is they just ran the macro game so well yeah. in the early game. Using the web weavers to push in, getting forts early, having two to three level leads at all times after that point, and just keeping up with it. Expert is really keeping in. It was really well done here. The last fight, too. The constant pressure against JPL. As I said, Ethereum, he needs a sharpshooter award. He has hit every bullet. Cool already, bam, straight in the face of Diablo, right between the eyes every single time. He was dropping low, and all of a sudden, the supports on the side of Dignitas had to focus over and over again at just healing out the, that damage, and it was, it's crazy. Well, we're getting ready for our fifth game of the series, and this exciting conclusion of the last series of this weekend. We'll be right back after this commercial.